Colin, thank you, you know, for, for joining today. Um, it's always a nice uh, opportunity to catch up with you. Um, I think it's safe to say that you have been in the industry for a while now and you've seen a lot of innovations and, you know, strategies to secure um, and protect the data. And the latest of those being, of course, mutable uh, storage, although technically we've been using it uh, since, I don't know, the days of the, the tape backup, so I can't really say it's a new concept, but um, it's shown itself pretty significant in protection uh, against ransomware. Um, so what what I thought is just, you know, to go through some basics, you know, it's like mm -hmm. what is immutable storage, you know, um, why do we need it? Uh, because as you know, we started when it comes to, to backup and, 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 and uh, data recovery, you know, we had situations where, okay, we, you had local backups, then, you know, you would, uh, change your strategy to have multiple backups, multiple, you know, instances of the, that data, you know, some would be, you know, maybe somewhere off premise in the cloud. Um, and, uh, now it seems all of this is even not enough. So we need additional immutable storage on top of everything. So, um, what's your opinion on, on, on this technology? So I I I immutable is, is a name that's been grabbed potentially by marketing, like big data, like cloud, like, like that capability. You, you, you hit a very good point there, Sinead, in terms of the first true immutability is tape backup. You know, you mm -hmm. back up to tape and you take the tape out. I worked with a exactly. government department many years ago, large, large UK department, who at the end of every day would take the hard drives out of the computer and lock them in a safe. And I think they still do that. So then you could say that's true immutability. So there's many definitions of immutability, but the key aspect is, look, we're going to back up a file. Backup is our generally our last line of defense in anything in terms of what we're working on. So uh our definition of immutability look we're going to back up that file and nothing can ever get into that file none of the threat actors none of the the state sponsored um hackers none of the guys with the hoodies that hollywood would have us believe that are uh, targeted in our business so true immutability is is peace of mind i think we're going to back up and i know when we backed up if it's hit all the credentials and we validated it and it's going to be, you know, it's in a consistent state and we know it's going to restore, then to us, immutability is, look, that's it. Nothing can get in there to get to your data. So that is really your last line of defense to keeping your business up and running when these guys target it from Belarus, from Russia, from China, uh, from Iran, from any other state-sponsored uh, targets after your money and data exactly and and, and uh, you know uh, what you mentioned you know uh, at the beginning you know with the uh, tape backups and you know taking those tapes you know out of the appliance and putting in some there somewhere in safe this is basically if if i i feel if i remember correctly it was called some something like air gap immutability or something like that um but uh, when it comes to it, uh, I, I think we have two different types of, you know, uh, immutability in place. So it would be um, software immutability and, and hardware immutability. And uh, uh, among, of course, it's, it's those two are a little bit different. So um, software would be based on, I, I think, uh, cryptographic hashing and digital, digital signatures. And hardware would be based on uh, worm or you know hardware-based uh, mecha mechanism. But, but what's mm. important, what I believe it's important to say when we are talking about immutability, um, is that immutability is now a silver bullet. So technically, immutability is a great protection against ransomware. But still, I think you have to be aware that you need additional uh, layers of security to protect this you, immutable you... storage. You have to sort of let, let me let me give my my really easy definition of that. Mm. When, when all our governments are building new warships, on these warships is the latest technology of self-seeking missiles, of of destructive responses to any incoming missiles. But on all of these ships, guess what's still there? Gatling guns, machine guns based on Gatling technology that is over 150 years old from the wild wild west that's there so to me 
that's backup, that's immutability. Where we have all these layers of defense in front, but, and there's a big but, if someone's able to defeat those layers, what's at the back end? So our analogy is at the back end, we have the Gatling gun, which is backup. So that back Gatling gun, that immutability, that ability to know, look, when everything else gets through, everything else has failed, your data backup is protected. And we're not having to take that offline in a, in a tape and drive it to a data center. Or I worked with a company in South Africa, and at the end of every day, and this was a large company, one of the biggest banks in South Africa, they gave it to the janitor, the tape, every night to put in the back of his car now if he had a crash could you say he was immutable at that stage when he's lying in the hospital so you know that that part there on immutability is make it simple make it so easy that every customer can be protected whether we call that immutable or or whether the the marketing guys get a hold of it and create a different terminology but it really is keeping you in business yeah, most definitely. Uh, I, I agree with you on this one. It's just uh, what I wanted to, you know, uh, point out is that, for example, uh, although you have the immutability in place, you still would have to, you know, take care of that there is no, let's say, some kind of uh, incident or, uh, you know, a breach where maybe, you know, uh, elevated privileges are exposed and then, you know, the attacker whether through a software or maybe through direct access to storage, you can still, you know, uh, delete the, the complete uh, data set or, you know, the, the storage and so on. Um, so I, I think it's, you know, really important to, to state, yes, of course, immutability um, is something that you need to have uh, if you want to protect yourself, protect your company, protect your business. Um, that's there's no question about it but also you know it's not something that will completely solve your all of your problems you know you have to also think about other security measures you know as well and uh, when we usually speak to, to to our you know partners or let's say end users we also hear a lot of you know concerns about storage consumption you know when it comes to yes. stability because of course you know there's it's a it's a little bit different concept that uh, you know uh, is stored as it is it can be changed so that normally means that you will uh, have uh, higher, you know, a little bit higher costs of uh, storing the, the, that data. Would you agree here? What's your experience? Uh, with so it's a yes and no for me. So yes, yeah, so on on the plus side, every storage company should be loving that we're going to go to a mutable EMC, NetApp, Synology. Wow, my storage is going to grow. But it, it doesn't have to. Uh, in terms of, you know, our technology was designed from the ground up. And I'm not just going to talk about our technology. In general, most of the companies coming out now are using their own deduplication engines. So same as us. So we're going to dedupe. And if you have if you have a process to say, right, I'm going to test this every five or six days, then you're only going to need to hold five or six days off-site data. Remember, we back up on primary, premise first, and the off-site is into an immutable cloud, whether that be Wasabi, Azure, or AWS, then it's as expensive, Sinisa, as you choose to make it. Now, to caveat that, the danger, I had a conversation about three weeks ago with an Australian company, and that's where immutable came from a lot that we heard in the early days. This guy said to me, he said, uh, I've got to move away from the cloud. And I said, well, Andrew, what, what, why is that? Uh, and it was a general conversation. He said, when I signed up to the cloud, in the beginning, when the pandemic started, it was eight thousand dollars per month, Australian dollars. Now it's at one hundred and thirty thousand dollars per month. He said, "I can't afford that. I cannot afford to do that." And we were going through. He said, "He said, don't get me wrong. We've put all of our data up into the cloud, so we we've lifted and shifted and put everything there. So that's the danger of immutable. If we just lift and shift with no proviso on." Do we have any du deduplication? Are we just going to leave that to build up and build up and build up without testing? Then yes, it can get completely out of control. Uh, and this is like, this is a process. So if someone moves to immutable, they've got to have a process that means that cloud storage does not just kill them with costs uh, because that's, the, that's one of the biggest dangers. And with a lot of the insurance companies we're seeing now, cyber insurance companies starting to recommend immutable 
their start where they will make that de facto in some cases because the insurance companies don't want to pay out so mm-hmm. we all know that mm-hmm. if we have a exactly. car accident what happens oh uh, did you have a seatbelt on did you have that were you driving uh, what, what was the car were you stopped did you have your mobile phone you know all those instances and it's mm-hmm. the same point we're seeing this with immutable storage that they're recommending now shortly it will be mandated so what is your immutable storage and we will insure you if not we won't insure you so back to your storage question yes it can get out of control very very quickly but everybody needs to walk in with their eyes open with a technology that has deduplication but that doesn't take away the ownership of you've still got to manage this you've still got to look and you know why why would you have immutable storage for every day for 365 days a year your storage mm-hmm. is going to be massive Exactly. You have to, you know, be flexible and see what fits best for your, you know, financial and technical needs, I would I would say here. Um and uh also uh what's what's important to know to note that um with uh, a lot of vendors, you know, today uh, offering and let's say marketing immutability, I I've read and I heard basically that in some cases we are really not technically talking about immutability, although it is advertised as as immutability. Yeah. So I I will not of course name any vendors and so on. But for example, I've heard that one of uh, global vendors technically you know uh, mm-hmm. offers immutability. Um, it's a, it's a big thing for them. But um, it seems that you know that data that shouldn't be able even to to be deleted or changed actually can can be deleted through command line interface and stuff like that have you any experience on on this kind of you know stories uh, yes heard the... a lot of stories on that Sineza, because one thing that we were never going to do is uh mm. do a smoke and mirrors on architecture mm. you know we've all seen that big data cloud virtualization you get fatigue and you get lost in look where's the data where, where's the true technology space on this so we could have said two years ago we do immutable with our off-site server and like you know some of our competition do um and it's not fair because you're buying a technology you think you are protected and reality is you're not you've not changed your processes they've not changed the product so so we took two years to really redevelop from the ground up on what true immutability should be so that to us is look you there's your destination here's our source we're going to put that there we're going to lock it in the key and throw the key away that's true immutability not and i have seen it and i've seen some nightmare stories already where uh vendors where marketing has perhaps got in a little bit too much we've got you know we've got immutability uh, and reality is they don't you know they've got it's an off-site server which they charge for um and that's not a true reflection of our industry a true reflection of what immutability is and, and it gives a f- massive false sense of security so yeah, yeah, we, yeah we've the... probably lost a bit of market share by waiting to have the product absolutely ready but we weren't going to do any smoke and mirrors on this yeah but that, that's you know the the question you know it's like how do you really you know recognize uh what's really you know immutable storage and and what's not you know you have to go or let's say push through all these marketing materials do your due diligence and your research and uh hopefully you will be able to you know see what's maybe, the real reality maybe, behind but maybe and this, this isn't me speaking as one it maybe it's like okay do you have a mutable yes okay if i can get in there then you pay me money and i get it for free well by that stage it's perhaps too late but you you know <laughs> you've got to stand up uh, there is some vendors that will offer i remember ibm many many years ago with their x servers um offering a massive amount of money if the server failed against a hp compact or any of those environments so so maybe the vendors all of us need to be bold and go look do we really believe in our technology enough right we do so i'm going to offer you a guarantee and, and as organizations looking at immutable you need to be pushing us as vendors, whether you're an end user, a partner, a distributor, say, show me your credentials, show me your immutability, that it's effective for my business needs. Um, and I think that's a fair response to anybody in the market who's looking at immutability. 
and and then it'll weed yeah. out the, the 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 wheat from the chaff or whatever the technology name is. Yeah, that's that's I completely agree there. That's like a really interesting concept. Um, in a I'm, way, to, you I'm, know, I'm not saying it, I could get us to agree to that, but you know, it's, <laughs> it, it it is you know, um, but 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 in your your mouth, you really standing up and saying we believe in our technology. You show you try and break it. For instance, Tesla, Tesla have just, they've had a for a couple of years to say um, if you can hack into a Tesla. We'll give you a hundred thousand dollars and you get a Tesla. And that was broken last week, actually, when I was in Israel. Hmm. So, you know, maybe more vendors we need to absolutely stand up for our beliefs in our technology and give the beliefs into the marketplace for our users to be comfortable with. I, I completely agree with you. Um so 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 basically just to let's say this sum it up uh in a way or just to, you know to, to do some key takeaways um immutability um is something that you know you would use in, in in case of you know uh let's say you wanted to uh ensure the data integrity uh or let's say in case you want to comply with certain regulations um so immutability actually gives you this let's say so trust and compliance when it comes to uh data um and um what uh needs to be focused on is uh you know not all vendors really you know offer true immutability so mm. be careful when choosing a vendor you know as you say uh do your research test uh check it out uh don't just try uh, or trust marketing I, I, maybe. That, I think to, to that point, Sineza, in every vendor will have a different definition of immutability. What mm -hmm. what the key thing is, if you're walking into, I need immutable, if I'm the end user, what is your definition of immutability? That mm -hmm. you have to mirror with the vendor and partner you choose. You've got the same thing. Because we, we could be talking completely cross purposes. Uh, look at the UK and France. You know, they started to build the channel tunnel one end to the next. Mm. Uh, and it could have been 10 meters apart but it, it was actually it hit perfectly well so this to me is like immutability make sure you're building that tunnel from both sides and it's going to hit exactly in the middle because that vendor may be looking go my definition of immutability is nothing to do with your definition so be absolutely clear and qualify uh, and be a do not be assumptive that immutability means the same to everybody because it doesn't that's a, that's a that's a really good point and uh actually as as you were now just speaking it came, something came to my mind uh you know we'll be we'll be we're been using um you know a specific phrase pretty often recently when it comes to cyber incidents it's like it's not uh if it's when um i'm sure you know familiar yes. with that so it's yeah, not yeah. if it's when meaning you know you will for sure get hit it's just a matter of time by implementing immutability i guess you change or shift you know the view a little bit meaning for the companies for the end users um because when the incident you know strikes it's like the question is are you able to recover will you be able to recover but you know by implementing immutability you're shifting this from it's not if it's when so it's not if you will be able to recover it's when so in a way i think you're you know so there's a there's a part that I, I saw a customer. So we we overlook this a lot, um, the human trauma of being hit by ransomware and immutability and being you know not having that. So imagine you're in an organization. That organization is twenty people big. That individual who's not an IT educated person. That you know they don't they're not in IT. They're doing their core job. They click on something. It lets that ransomware in, and that's it. The system is locked. Now, what is the trauma to that individual? Because that business, 20 people big, do they have the money to get back online? Do they have to call in an IT partner? Do they have to pay the ransom? How long will it take them coming out? That poor individual, the human trauma, we often overlook to think, what is the impact to that individual? They are traumatized. Because they're looking and go, wait a minute, my company could go under. They've got mortgages to pay. All of those people, they're all looking at me as if it was my fault. That can happen to absolutely every single one of us. You know, Sinead, if you're expecting a, a, 
something from FedEx. You suddenly get an email from FedEx. What stops you clicking on that? Nothing. Think? Nothing. No. So we are, we are the, the, this is the the snobbery factor in terms of, well, I'm in IT, so I would never click on it. Yes, I would. You know, because I may be expecting something. The threat actors are clever. They they target they uh, you know they are. It's not some individual in like Hollywood to have us believe who's a sixteen year old hook person wearing a hoodie. These are guys with sophisticated support departments, sophisticated sales teams with flags above their desks of which countries they target. And small to medium business targets, enterprise targets. So exactly the same as you'd see any sophisticated mm-hmm. software company that they are out there targeting us. Uh, but it's not only it's it's not only this, you know. With with uh, in my opinion, you know, with the development of artificial intelligence, you know, that will even you know make it uh, harder, you know, because uh, I mean everybody can use, of course, you know. <laughs> Chat GPT and other artificial oh, intelligence engines yeah. that can, you know, um, generate whether it's uh, just written phishing attack or, you know, even uh, deep fakes or it's it will be pretty, pretty extremely hard. I'm not sure if I'm even, you know, using the English language here properly because pretty and extremely hard is uh, some weird combination of words. But what I want to say is I think it will be extremely hard for anybody to recognize a phishing attack and yeah. you know protect protect the data not only you know um and users who are not so tech savvy so to say so I, I saw one the other day and it came in it was um it said Citibank a Citibank email well I challenge anybody no one would have been able to detect that as well but the a in bank was in Cyrillic everything else was English but the a looked and there was you know, you think, okay, Matt, before we even get to chat GPT, so you're absolutely right. So we are all at complete risk. Our data is at risk. And we need to partner with organizations that have the same mindset as us, a technology that can fit and be protective completely because we can't rely on humans. And the reason they get through is our brains are too smart because we read that in a different way. Uh, now, that helps the hackers the threat actors to get into our system because our brain can read the first and last letter and it doesn't need any of the other letters to be in the right format. We can read that. And that works for these guys. For us, mm. it's, you know, it, it's tough because we effectively have lots of open doors because our brains are clever. We're slaves to human psychology, <laughs> uh, I would say. Um, yeah, well, so uh, I think we can maybe wrap it up for today i'm not sure how long is our session already lasting it's around let's say 40 minutes so um what would you say from your perspective are key takeaways when we are talking about immutability and data protection my key takeaways is if you haven't got immutable then it's something you need to absolutely consider if you've got old air gap technology and and tapes listen that's not so bad but recovery of tapes recovery of that testing you know, you've got that downside. So uh, this isn't me trying to sell a lot of our technology. This is me being, you know, yeah, really insightful, hopefully, to say you've got to look at Immutable. You've got to protect yourselves with the best solutions to fit your budget and your business. Um, but if you are looking at Immutable, don't go filling up as you're with 365 days of undeduplicated data because it's going to be expensive and it doesn't need to be expensive, but you do need to protect yourselves because the threats are not diminishing. They're getting greater and greater and greater by the day. And it's easy money. You know, I could go on the dark web now and I could buy 500,000 email addresses phishing as a service for $1,000. Now, what's to stop me doing that? So, you know, and that's without the sophistication of, you know, state-sponsored aspects targeting that's just yeah an individual to go and buy so protect yourselves you have to look at immutable exactly i mean you know don't throw away your money on uh, ransom just no. use it uh, to no. secure a business instead um yeah so, so, so basically um use immutable implemented you know um 
also think about other you know controls that you need to implement or let's say security measures layered security that goes together with immutable um uh also what i want to add is um i'm not sure if i had something missed here um i think i think uh i'm i'm kind of you know lost for words here um because you know i i want to you know do something really you know uh let's say useful and smart for the end of the the session but uh, uh unfortunately I, i'm guessing i'm not so experienced in these things but yeah as you said security please you know guys implement immutable um if you haven't seen by now uh altaro slash hornet security has a new v9 version out uh with immutable storage uh go check it out test it it's it's an amazing product um and, and remember so we we have offers on that up until the end of uh june the 30th in terms of we'll get an extra year sma free of charge for version 9 um it's a great product. It's it's simple to use, and uh, I would test that against anything else on the marketplace to see which is true immutability. Definitely. Um, well, Colin, I have to thank you for you know joining us today. You know, thank you for you know, sharing your time and you know uh, valuable experience on this topic. Uh, for next session, um, we have prepared the. Uh, Fishing uh, uh, education and awareness. So we'll go a little bit deeper in that topic, and you know, share some insight, you know, trends and news from from this perspective. Um, for all the guys that will watch this first uh, podcast session of of ours, please, you know, sign up. Uh, it will mean uh, a world to us. Uh, go and test new VM backup V9, as I said, um, and yeah. As and and maybe say that, that you know some of the guys who are going to become regular viewers of the podcast they they mm -hmm. they submit um suggestions to us on topics also. then also you know then 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 we have to go and do a fair bit of research if it's a topic offline from us which um let's see how good we can be that's that's a really good point you know that thank you for this suggestion so guys you heard Colin uh drop your suggestions let us know you want what you want to hear from us and we'll happily do our research and uh, do a, a topic or a session on this um and yeah just as we said don't throw away money on you know ransom use it to, to secure your business uh, I, I'm sure there's lots of employees that will welcome a increase in their salary as opposed to pay and ransomware or organizations. So uh, protect you guys there. So they can have a pay rise. Uh, definitely. <laughs> definitely. So, Colin, have an amazing day. Um, thank you for today's session and uh, talk to you then soon. All right. Thanks, Eliza. Thanks all. Okay. Speak soon. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.